It's been said that maybe the most prominent theme of all of sacred scripture is that God does not see how we see, nor do we as human beings see how God sees. In fact, if we were to boil down the Christian adventure, our lives, into one thing, maybe we might say that we who are made in the image and likeness of God are meant to come to see how God sees, to live how he lives, to love how he loves. And isn't that called holiness when we join our hearts to his, when our hearts are one, when we will what God wills for our life? That being said, probably one of my most favorite characters of all of sacred scripture, and especially of the Old Testament, is a man named David. David, who we would know, would become King David. And I love the story about how Samuel the prophet finds David, how he goes to choose him. Samuel only knows that God is sending him to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem. And apparently, Jesse is going to have a son who's going to become the king of Israel. Sounds simple enough. Except for that when Samuel gets to Bethlehem and meets Jesse, Jesse presents him seven sons. And I can only imagine what, what Samuel saw. Because before him were seven sons, and immediately he sees a man and he says, this must be the one. Samuel must have thought, gosh, this guy's good looking. This guy looks strong. He looks like a leader. People would respect him. People would follow his word. And immediately God strikes Samuel to the heart and says, no, that's not him. And God says these chilling words to Samuel. He says, Samuel, remember that you do not see how God sees, but you must choose whom I choose. And he says to him, God looks into the heart, while you, Samuel, you only see the outward appearance. And so one by one, Samuel goes through and he asks God, is this the one, is this the one, is this the one you're choosing? And one by one, he dismisses all of Jesse's sons. And what I think is funny is that he actually has the audacity to look back at Jesse and says, are these your only sons? Don't you have any more? And to my surprise, the answer was yes. And Jesse was basically saying, well, we didn't even call him in because he's basically the runt of the family. He's not the one that you're looking for. So Jesse calls David. David comes into the house and immediately God strikes Samuel in the heart. And Samuel says, this is him. God tells him, choose him. This is the one whom I've chosen for Israel. My question remains, however, what did God see in David's heart? Wouldn't you love to know? What did God see? Well, we don't have the details in that scripture at that time, but we do know that later God does speak about David. And one of the things that he says about David that I always remember, he said, this is David and he's a man after my own heart. God calls David a man after his own heart. Well, what does that mean? That means that David isn't perfect, but he's a man who's seeking the will of God. He's seeking to, to unite his heart to God's heart, to God's will. He wants what God wants, and that's what God is looking for. In fact, if we wanted another example, we could look to our patron, our patron of faithfulness during these rapidly changing times, St. Joseph. I think we could just as easily say that Joseph was a man after God's own heart. Joseph was not perfect, but Joseph was a man who was ready to do God's will at any time. And he did radical things to follow God's voice because he wanted to will what God wills for his life. You know, as we're sitting at home, maybe we're not so concerned about our outward appearances anymore. No one sees us, can't even get out of the house. Maybe one of the gifts and one of the graces that we're meant to receive during this time is the grace of allowing God to look into our hearts and for us to be concerned more about what's in our heart than our outward appearances. As we rest and reflect today on this day of the Sabbath, God reminds us of our identity. He tells us, you are a son or a daughter made in my own image after my own likeness. The question today is, what will God find in our hearts? What will he find when he peers into our hearts? Maybe that's something that we need to work on. Maybe we need to work on our faithfulness. Maybe we need to make ourselves sons and daughters who are after God's hearts. Do we will as he wills? Do we love as he loves? Do we look like what he looks like? Do we see what he sees? Do we live as he lives? When God asks us the question today, we, the beloved sons and daughters, and he asks us the question, what will I see when I look into your heart? Let's answer confidently, Lord, I will follow you. 
I want to love as you love. I want to will as you will. And I want your heart to be united to mine. 